we've just secured financing this week to go ahead with repairs to our house. And it's not going to be cheap, and we're going to be paying it off for a long time. But it means that should we ever decide to, we can sell the house and move. And also, here's another thing. I can't insure the house while it has um, damages in need of repairs. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't realize it. that. Yeah. It, 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 th not to the extent of the damages we have and the problems we have. Um, you can't insure it. And we kind of need insurance because we're in, yeah. hur we're in Hurricane Alley now. Yeah. And uh, if, if something ever happens, I would like to have insurance on my house so that I'm not completely everything gone with no monies. Yeah. That would suck. I mean, not like they pay out great anyway, but. Or I'm going to be living this time next year. It's already snowing. Yay, I want Mr. Snow and I want the snow back. At least I think, though, it's there's no humidity there, like none. So, so it's all it's all powdery. To is wet, slushy, heavy, awful. No, no sweet snow. You got the Midwest snow. It's a good snow. Yeah, as I understand it, Colorado snow is not going to be like that because there's no humidity ever. Nope. I miss that. I had that in Illinois when I lived in Chicago, YouTube, and it was it was uh, it was fantastic. It was, except when it, it starts melting. And then it gets the asphalt on it and turns into that black stuff. And you have mountains yeah. of it alongside the New York, roads. New York City snow looks like that after about a day. <laughs> so anyway, we, we, we blathered. It's almost Thanksgiving week. It's almost, it is Thanksgiving week. It's almost Thanksgiving. Let's, let's get to the nonsense. Let's find stuff to not be thankful for. Well, no, actually, we have to start with something that I'm very thankful for. This is one of the best things ever. And it made me so happy. And I am incredibly thankful for it. Monkeys with laser beams? Close. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the world wide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What is Wrong With You. And this first story, we've got video, and it's wonderful. And I, I sometimes I still believe this world is a good place to live. And stories like this. Um, they, they give me, they, they, they make me happy. Um, let, let, let's get the video here. Here, here let, let's have a look. Um, yes. This is from Florida. And what you're watching here at home is a car going around and around backwards in a circle. And you're like, well, well, Nash, what's, what's so special about that? Well, it's, it's just a car going in a circle. Going in a circle for nearly an hour, I would like to mention, too. This, this went on for almost an hour. Well, the reason why this is so amazing is, um, it was a dog. The Florida dog puts car into reverse, drives it in circles for nearly an hour. <laughs> Annie Sable's, uh, Ann Sable's cul-de-sac in Port St. Lucie, Florida, was fairly quiet. Well, it was until a dog hopped into its owner's running car, kicked it in reverse, and drove in circles for an hour, smashed a neighbor's mailbox before safely exiting the vehicle without so much as a scratch. And ripped off the bumper, it looks like. <laughs> but Sabal didn't know who was behind the How wheel. How did the dog get out of the car? Did the dog open the door? I don't know. We'll get there. Um... Sabal didn't know it was behind the wheel when he first started the car, whirling around the block like an inept student driver might. First I thought, some, saw somebody backing up, and then I was going like, okay, what are they doing? Um, when the cops came, then the fire department, authorities uh, watched from a distance as the driving dog did donuts. Finally, <laughs> the vehicle hit a mailbox and some garbage cans, then slowed down. Port St. Lucie police opened the door and Sabal watched as a large black Labrador retriever hopped out of the driver's seat. As it turns out, the dog's owner, who asked to remain anonymous, uh, had left his car running in the street when the dog changed gears and didn't stop driving for almost an hour. <laughs> the dog, I, I can tell you right now, the dog thought that this is the best day ever because that's a Labrador. <laughs> It's like being on a carousel. Yeah, I do it. Hi, 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 I just, I love what happened here. 
A dog just entirely brought the whole world to a screeching halt. Had to involve the fire department, the police, the entire neighborhood. Everyone's entire world was upside down for one. And there's no training for that. No. That's not a scenario they've prepped for. Nope. <laughs> we gotta make some shit up on the fly. No, they, they, they are prepped for uh, biological attacks. They are prepped for hostage situations. They're not prepped for a dog driving backwards for an hour. That's, no, that's not in the not. rule book. I mean, he's a better driver than Toons is. <laughs> yes, Toons has always went off a cliff. <laughs> it's just... Most of our... I don't know. I don't even know if anyone's going to get that. SNL used to do a skit. Toons is the driving cat. Yeah. Tra who could drive a car? He drives and it around. Always all ended over the town. with the car going off a cliff and everybody dying. Toons is the driving cat. I just, I just imagine this poor dog was like, Hi, human! Hi, human! Hi, human! Hi, human! <laughs> Hi, human. <laughs> Look, I'm doing it by myself. The thing you always do. Uh, I'm a human too. It's just, just one dog can just stop the, the, everybody's day. Just like, even you living your life, you are not prepared to walk outside one day and there's a dog driving in circles. Fuck no. That's not, when you wake up in the morning, you think of all the possible things you could encounter, you are likely to encounter. Dog driving in circles. Usually Not is it on the list. list. Yeah. No. It just made me, that made me happy. I'm just glad the dog's okay. I don't really. Oh yeah. I'm really dog's concerned fine. about the property damage. I'm just glad the dog's okay. Dog's fine. However, let's. Uh... He can go to the vet on his own now. <laughs> now let's move on to the less happy stuff. Um, mentioned at the top of the show, it is almost Black Friday. And it remains to be seen this year, considering Black Friday like started two weeks ago. Yeah, Black Friday sales are already going. Yeah, I mean, Best Friday, uh, Best Buy is sending me all the Black Friday sales. I'm like, are we gonna have like a, a single day anymore? So it remains Hopefully to be seen. Not if we could spread that shit out, that would be okay. It remains to be seen if we're going to have a Black Friday follies next week, as we are wont to do, where everyone gathers together and has all sorts of brawls and 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 fights and battles due to its great savings in your local retail establishments. The day after we express gratitude for what we have, for our abundance. Yeah. We go out and beat the shit out of each other to get more. Oh. That's... America! Um, however, uh, I've, I've often maintained that the Black Friday was slowly becoming less about the savings and more about the fights, that, that Black Friday was a new event where people were just finding an excuse to get together and battle. Yeah. And now uh, the UK for, for a little while had a Black Friday and then they gave that shit up because why? They don't even have Thanksgiving, but they had a Black Friday. Yeah. I think it has, has however, left a mark on the people. Um, let me see. Yeah, because this, I want to, to verify this here. Wait, is this, wait, hold on. Hold on. This is Birmingham, England. Yeah, this, this, yeah, I, I see. Yeah, it's Birmingham, England. You know, so this is not Alabama, right? No, it's not Alabama. This is England. <sighs> Birmingham, Star, si Star City, 13 year old girl among arrest after machete brawl during Frozen 2 viewing. I mean, it's Frozen 2. 13-year-old is among five teenagers arrested over a mass brawl involving, involving youths armed with machetes at a Birmingham cinema. Families were watching Frozen 2 at Star City when the disorder broke out late on Saturday afternoon, sparking a mass evacuation of the complex. Police say up to 100 teenagers were involved in the major disorder where people were armed with machetes. Dozens of officers were sent to the complex. Um, two machetes were seized during the trouble, saw pockets of fighting, and seven police officers left with minor injuries as they dealt with the crowd in and around the cinema. Armed police were deployed to the scene, drawing tasers to restore order following a very hostile response. Um, there was a fight in the cinema. A group of girls on, a group of girls on one girl, and it all escalated. The group ran into the cinema rooms to hide, and a lot of people turned up. 
Five teenagers arrested, a 13-year-old, another girl and a boy age 14, a 19-year-old man, another boy age 14 were arrested for obstructing police. So pretty much... Where the goddamn hell does a 13-year-old get a machete? Hardware store. Really? Yeah. You can get a fucking machete at the hardware store? Mm Mm-hmm. Why? Because a machete is not a weapon. A machete is made for clearing uh, growth. That's why they have it. That's why all explorers have machetes. It's for clearing growth out of your way as you're walking through dense uh, foliage. It's, it's like it's like a mini scythe. That's what the machete was designed for. Oh. It's not a weapon. It's just been co-opted as a weapon. I have a friend who's a retired Marine, and when he was stationed in Okinawa, they were issued machetes to kill the banana spiders, which were this big. <laughs> So yeah, it is perfectly legal to walk into a Home Depot or or a Tesco's, I suppose, grab a machete, and then go out on the street waving around a machete. Of course, at the point when you're waving around the machete, it stops being legal, but Right. I I just want to know why why multiple people had the machetes. Yeah. I could see a coincidence of maybe one person having a machete. But yeah. this was multiple people. This was like they were trying to do a really brutal version of Beat It. This this is like the anti flash mob. This this is the horror. Yeah. Of, of, this is what this is why I'm saying they didn't have a Black Friday. They're not going to have a Black Friday, but they've gotten they, they, they tasted blood with the with those <laughs> those brawls, and now they have to. To be fair, I think the United Kingdom tasted blood centuries ago. Yeah, but now that they got used to retail. I don't think the taste of blood is new to them. They got used to that, that retail. Yeah. That, that retail slaughter. That sweet, sweet torture of customer service employees who have to be nice even while you stab them. It was a slash mob. Oh. Greg, don't. Greg, Greg, don't. It's not a. But, uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> uh. A bunch of, like, kids just wanted to see Frozen. They just wanted to see Elsa. Apparently in this one, Elsa gets a girlfriend, which is awesome. And kids just wanted to see Anna and Elsa and a singing snowman, and instead they got... Do you want to cause a riot? Yeah. yeah. What the hell? Do you want to have a stabbing? <laughs> well, here's here's our, our next one. Um, most of the time, it's been my I I I'm not I can't really comment on this because I haven't been in that this situation. But usually, when you are intoxicated in public, part of of what you're trying to do is avoid law enforcement. Whether it's you're drunk, whether you're high, whether you're whatever you're on, you do not want to get the attention of the people with the handcuffs and the woo-woo side. You don't want that to happen. So I don't understand what went wrong here because he he just did the complete opposite. Pea Ridge man arrested, charged with possession of meth after shouting at police. Pea Ridge? Pea Ridge, Arkansas. And for those well, of you there's who, your first problem. For those of you who are just listening in the background, you're like, wait, P Ridge? It's P-E-A, not P-E-E. Just just so you know. Um still, like, how did that sound? Is there a ridge where they grow all their peas? I guess. A P Ridge man is facing multiple meth-related charges due to his bizarre behavior towards officers. Thursday, November 14th, officers from the P Ridge Police Department made contact with Sheldon Butterbaugh. Butterbaugh? It's only one T. Buterbaugh, so, I would guess. Yeah, it's only one T, so it's Buterbaugh. 54. It's an name. Lieutenant Michael Lizenby with the Pea Ridge Police Department says Buterbaugh was uh, traveling south on uh, South Curtis Avenue when he suddenly stopped his vehicle in the middle of the roadway for no reason. Lizenby said Buterbaugh then turned into a yard and began shouting at police officers, they need to go around him. <laughs> no, they don't. Due to his bizarre action, shit. due to his bizarre actions, officers approached him. See, that's the thing. If you yeah. if you yell at the cops to for them to do something, they're not going to do it. 
They're oh. actually going to come over to you and find out why you're yelling at them to do stuff. Because now they have probable cause. Because you're acting shady. Um, officers then discovered Budaba was actively on parole. The Ridge officers called in a canine to sniff around Budaba's vehicle. The canine officers alerted the presence of a controlled substance. Officers searched Buterbaugh's vehicle and found a small black zipper case containing approximately 8 grams of meth, a digital scale covered in methamphetamine residue, and a series of magnets. Magnets? Now that one I don't even understand what the magnets were for. Um, fucking magnets, how do they work? Buterbaugh was charged with possession of methamphetamine, purpose to deliver, possession of drug paraphernalia, and driving on a suspended driver's license. <laughs> He's also charged with a parole violation. So this dude had every reason not to gain it. You had one he job. Keep his fucking head down. Like, nobody likes it when the cops are behind you. No. no you're, not. you're nervous. Right. You're wondering if they're running your plate. Right. You have to drive the fucking speed limit. Yes. Like, flip them off. Sure. You know, nobody likes having a cop riding their ass for miles behind them on the road. But the no. solution to that... Like, make a turn. Pull into a shopping center. Pretend you're going to go shopping. Whatever. The solution is not get out and yell at the cops. Yeah, he had... Or flipping them off. He had one task, and that was not to alert law enforcement to anything unusual. Yeah. He had meth paraphernalia in the car. He had, he was, he, you know, he's obviously been dealing. He wasn't supposed to be driving, and he was on parole. One job... And he completely you had a failed. a lot of incentives to just keep your fucking head down. And just, it, you had one job. 54 years old, man. Old enough to know better. Okay, this, this next story, I, I want to stress this again, because I get, I get these, these stories sometimes that make me unhappy. We don't do stories where people get killed. We don't do stories where people hurt other people or with kids getting hurt, because those aren't funny stories. Not even if, oh, but they deserved it, because I get that argument a lot. But sometimes I will do stories where people hurt themselves, if it's not too serious, and, you know, not life-threatening, and they kind of did it for a stupid reason, or a bad reason. And uh, that's what this next one is, and I, that, well, that's half of it. The other reason is I get to say this, and I've been dying to say it since the story came in. I used to be a hunter, but then I took an arrow to the knee. What is that from? Skyrim. Oh, I thought it was from Game of Thrones. No, it's Skyrim. You, the, the, the thing is, sometimes you walk by guards in Skyrim, and they'll say little pre-recorded things. You know, they have, they have a list of clips. You're like, yeah. you should move along or whatnot. And one of them is they'll just randomly say, I used to be an adventurer like you, but then I took an arrow to the knee. And, and they do they just, sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger? Some of them do, yes. Because they're, they're Nordic. They're Nordic. So they sound like but that. He's not Nordic. No, he's not. But they said, so, and they say it over and over again. So it became a meme because no matter where you'd go in Skyrim, some guard would say, I used to be an adventurer like you, but I took an arrow in the knee. And everybody would say it. Yeah, I knew it was a meme. I just didn't know where it was from. So and I thought, there's an episode of Game of Thrones where I thought somebody said something like that maybe they did and it was because of the meme well let's let's get to, and when they say seriously injured he's not it's not life-threatening so i think i think the the uh the headline's a bit misleading let me explain what happened here a hunter seriously injured by his own crossbow earlier this month faces several charges including hunting deer from a baited area incident occurred on november 9th when environmental police Responded to a report of a serious hunting accident. The victim called 911 after a bolt from a bolt from his crossbow entered his leg while he was walking in the woods. Investigators determined the hunter had been hunting prior to legal shooting hours, as well as hunting over bait. Now, this I don't know how how much you know about hunting. I know very little about hunting, but one of the very not cool rules, the the, the things we actually have laws for that you're not supposed to do, um, you can go out in the woods. And you can find a deer, and if you have a license for it, kill that deer, and you take it home, and it's legal. You cannot set up bait to attract the deer to come to you, and then pop them off. Because that's like cheating. Well, it's not so much cheating as they allow you to hunt deer to keep the population in check. Yeah. 
And if you bait them, you're not keeping the population in check. You're potentially over hunting them, which could call which could, you know, you're also teaching them that humans are safe and they should come towards them. Yeah. And you don't want wildlife to think that. So, so and people are saying, so he's not a hunter. He's a poacher. Technically, if you hunt in violation of the law, yeah, you are poaching. Technically. That's kind of the definition of poaching. You're, you're, you're hunting in violation of, of the legal statute. So, um, uh, you asshole. Um, what were you? Fuck you. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, all right. For one thing, he's using a crossbow, not a gun. All right. I'll give him that at least. And I, I am not quite so down on deer hunters because if you don't, keep deer populations in check, they are worse than rabbits. And they are kind of destructive. They are, like, seriously destructive. They will eat pretty much anything, yeah. as I understand it. Yeah. But, so, I, I understand it has to be done. I'm not very happy about it. It's not my thing, but I understand it has to be done. To be a dick about it, though. Yeah. Hey, look, there's Grady. Oh, hi, Grady. Still slightly damp, and... I agree. He's still a fluffy. <laughs> he's kind of fluffy, but he's still he's he's giving us the ass. He's giving us the butt. Hi. Oh, I'm gonna puke on your amp. Oh, please don't. <laughs> Poor cat. Fucking mad. Uh, I want how abused I am. All right. Next up, um, this was happened. This has all happened before. It will all happen again. We just mentioned this last week. The, the, the arts and crafts, the, the making your own license plate. This has happened multiple times. And I don't understand why people think they're going to get away with it. Well, <laughs> I will point out, I, I always said, you know, why you've got to have some talent to it. You've got to. This guy kind of impressed me. Chippewa Falls Police driver arrested for fourth uh, operating while intoxicated with crafted license plates out of Ham's box. Those are beer. Those, those, that's a brand of beer. Uh, and let's have a look at what he did here. Because if you take a look at that, uh, look at look, look at those those li the guys holding the license plates. Um, but let, let's 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 advance a little bit. And he flips them over. And they're just cardboard boxes. Those are pretty good. Those are good. Driver arrested for operating uh, without an operating while intoxicated. Fourth offense, four times. Crafted fake license plates out of beer boxes. Police on Monday, November 18th, shared video showing an officer holding the license plates, which appeared to look like typical Wisconsin license plates. The officer flipped them over, revealing they were instead Ham's beer boxes. Officers at the scene first noticed the plates didn't match the vehicle and soon learned the plates were not real plates at all. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm kind of impressed because he did do that. That's some good work. But the thing is, if it's a fake number, it's still a fake number. Right. The, and they run it and it still won't work. But because like one of the reasons you don't like having a cop behind you is because if you stop at a red light, they run your plate a lot of the time just because they have nothing else to do and they're behind you. So they run your plate and that's how they screen for shit. Long, long ago, when I was uh, in college, I got pulled over by the cops. I, I was like, what? I didn't do anything. I wasn't speeding. I was just, why? And they pulled me over because my license plate didn't match my registration. Because they'd fucked up at the DMV and it was one it was one letter off and I had to they couldn't just fix the registration I had to go and get a new registration and new license plates. Oh, that sucks. Because just because they didn't match because of how the system was set up then. I got pulled over because I didn't realize my inspection was a couple of weeks past due and the cop was behind me at the red light and that's what they do if they're behind you at a light and they don't have stuff going on they'll just run your fucking plate. Yeah. But, so, so if the numbers aren't real, you're probably going to get caught anyway. I, I also appreciate this guy had two options. Maybe you could stop driving drunk and get some help. Or you can make elaborate fake license plates and attempt to keep driving. And honestly, if that's his work drunk, like, damn. I just I, maybe just stop driving drunk like a fucking asshole. I mean, at least I gotta give it hand it to him. They actually look like license plates. 
They do. They actually fooled the cops until they got up close. They weren't like freaking paper mache. Is it like since played through 3D? Yeah. And your fake almost certainly isn't going to be, and the light hits it differently. But, you know, at least he, he wasn't using, like, fucking Sculpey and shit. Like we've seen yeah. before. Yeah, he didn't just write numbers in Sharpie. <laughs> we've seen that, too. Uh, well, it, it kind of, I mean, that's a lot of effort to just avoid doing the thing you should have done in the first fucking yeah. place. Come on now. I mean, I mean, I guess dealing with your alcohol problem is more effort. True, but in the long run, it's better for you. Yes. Especially not getting you... In but if you just make fake plates, you don't have to confr confront your issues with your parents. <laughs> well, speaking of confronting issues, we've got, uh, we've got another video this week. To uh, but Here we go. Um, have a look at this. Hi, I'm at the Home Depot. Oh, the car's on fire. Chaos unfolding within... Uh, the, the, shut that off temporarily. Um, you're seeing surveillance video here. Get the uh, link over to Tara. Of someone driving into a gas pump and it catching straight the fuck on fire. Uh, newly released <gasps> surveillance video from Chandler Gas Station says the moment a car crashed into a gas pump causing an explosion and fire. Crash shop on October 22nd, 24th. Um, police say Clement... <laughs> you're watching, yeah. Police say uh, Clement Torres, who was allegedly impaired, was behind the wheel at the time of the crash. Torres allegedly lost control of his Ford Mustang after making a U-turn. He pulled out of the gas station. Um, police say Torres ran away from the fire and tried to walk home, but was later tracked down and arrested. Once police found Honey. Torres... <laughs> Remember, gonna find you. remember we were just saying about registration and license plates, honey? Police, gonna find you. police found Taurus. They could smell a strong alcoholic odor on his breath. Over the gasoline? In that, in between the time he was on his way home. And listen to this. When Torin was taken, was Taurus was taken to the Chandler Police Department. He scored a .241 uh, blood alcohol concentration during his field sobriety test. When police tried to get in touch with Torres' family, they said he was on his way to DUI Veterans Court in Tampa for a previous DUI arrest when the incident occurred. So you were going to show up at DUI court drunk. Bold strategy, Cotton. I was all, I'm was. i sorry I couldn't make it to the DUI court because I had a DUI. And I set a fucking... <laughs> I set a fucking gas station on fire. Like, you know that if you're in traffic court and you're not supposed to be driving, they ask you how you got there. Magic. I had to go is, to traffic court. Magic and they is, ask me, how did you get here? Yeah, they don't accept magic as a viable answer. You can't just say... Uh, <laughs> right, because you're not supposed to be driving and they fucking know that. You can't say a wizard did it. That's, yeah. not, that's not a good answer. Um, I love how this jackass is like, oh shit, it's off. I'm gonna run away. Bye bye. And he walked home. Like, well, that car's gone. Time to move on with my life. Just cut. We're gonna go to DUI court drunk. Yes. That's a bad fucking idea. Oh. That's a whole new level of dumb. Everything, everything here was a bad decision. Everything was a bad, bad fucking decision. You tried to run, they gonna find you. Including that shirt, actually. Real, yeah, I know, right? Let's 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 have a look at that shirt again, because because there's an action shot here that's just astonishing. Where is it? Um, let's have let's have a look here. Where's that action shot? There we go. There, there's there's the there's there's that action shot. Oh man. He's going to DUI court in jeans and a Hawaiian shirt. Drunk. I can't was, emphasize that enough. If I have, I have never in my life had to go to court. That's, I'm not bragging there. I'm just saying circumstances have, have aligned that I've never been arrested. But if I ever was, if I ever wound up in some sort of legal trouble, you can bet your ass I would have a suit and tie on. 
I would be, I would, I, I would tie my hair back. I would contemplate cutting it off just for that specific instance. I would be like, your honor. Hello. Very nice to meet you. Do you like my suit? It's very nice and tie and I've got shiny you wanna, shoes. You want to make a good impression and not look like a fucking burnout. I am not going there in a t-shirt, jeans, the hole in the knee. He's not, oh God, he's not even wearing socks. And he's got that creamer hair going on. He's not even... Honey, you're not even it's wearing You know, socks. it's probably for the best that you didn't make it to court today. Maxine says CSI Margaritaville. <laughs> <laughs> but the, your method of missing court, not ideal. <laughs> You could have killed a lot of people. Yes, I, I. That's that's one of the stories. You're like, you're. We. Oh my God, we're so lucky someone's not dead. Yeah, because there was a car right next to that pump. The whole pump could have exploded. The yeah. entire gas station. Okay. Could have set off the next one. While one of those th th those tropes from movies is you shoot at a car and it explodes. That right. doesn't happen. You shoot at a gas station and it explodes. That doesn't happen. However, if the gas catches on fire. And the right, uh, it's called a fuel air mixture. It's when the air and the fumes from the gasoline mix in exactly the right mixture. It could cause, it could, you're pretty much essentially have made a potential bomb. So yeah, if you knock over the pump and you cause, I'm just, wow. You fucker. Yeah, you are, everybody there is incredibly lucky he didn't fucking kill somebody. Stop breaking the law, asshole. Just get drunk at home. Right. Why? Why and is it? And then stay the fuck home. Why is it that, that everybody gets drunk and determines I have got to go out for McDonald's, hand me my keys? Why? You can get McDonald's on Uber Eats now. That's Still no shit, key. right? They, I, we got to do. They'll bring that shit to you. We got Instacart here. They, they bring me my groceries. I'm so happy. I love that shit. No excuse. Just... Their biggest risk is ordering 15 orders of fries. So, and that's yeah. all on you. The first thing... Anybody else that way. The first thing this week we learned is maybe if you're going to court because of a crime, don't do crimes as you're going to the court. Especially not that exact same specific crime. Yeah, exactly. Because that, that's not a good look. Like, don't hold up the judge on your way into your mugging trial. We've learned that uh, y'all took the wrong message away, which is not improve your counterfeits. It's don't use fake plates. Yeah. I know we mocked you for using fucking Sculpey on the license plate, but that wasn't the point. No. <laughs> you kind of missed it. Oh, so we need better fakes. Okay, I get what you're saying. No. You, you, you took the wrong yeah, lesson. Fire your initiative. Yeah, you took the we wrong lesson. Wrong. Um, we've learned that, uh, if, if you poach the deer, um, that's not going to work out well for you. And sometimes, well, you get what's coming. Not going to say exactly you deserved it, but I'm not going to say you didn't either. I'm going to say if you're going to carry a weapon around the woods, you should have better safety habits with that fucking weapon. Mm -hmm. We've learned that if you are <laughs> intoxicated, holding, on parole, and shouldn't be driving, maybe you should leave the police alone. Yeah. Don't bother them. Don't get their attention. You do you, they do them. Okay? You don't want their attention. No. Um, we've learned that the, uh, the Black Friday brawls have left a, a culture hungry for, for, for the <laughs> rush of violence. The real zombie apocalypse won't have anything to do with the virus. No. It'll just be a fucking doorbuster on a TV. <laughs> I, I am praying. I am praying that 2019 and 2020 will be the era where the doorbuster becomes an anachronism. When we're like 60, it's like, yeah. Auntie Tara, <laughs> what was a doorbuster? I mean, I doubt it, but that would be nice. That would be lovely. We could just get that out of our fucking culture. I know we, we we go over the Black Friday stuff, but it's not because we want it to happen. It's because we hate it. No. And if it never happens again, if I never have to do another Black Friday Follies that would be on great. this show. Yes, that would be. And finally, we've learned sometimes in life, 
you will get a dog driving backwards on your cul-de-sac. That's just the, that could happen. Just one day. Sometimes the matrix glitches, man. <laughs> I, you know, if, if I swear, if I, if there's a dog driving backwards in a circle on my street, I would pull a rocking chair off my porch. <laughs> I would get some popcorn and I'd be hanging out on my lawn being like, thank you. Whoever. I officially have nothing better to do today. <laughs> Because th- th- this is not going to happen again. This is like a fucking shooting star. Yeah. Of nonsense. Yeah. I'm just glad that dog's okay. <laughs> it's better than okay. He's he's. I, dog's we, a fucking hero now. We all the other dogs on the block are like, yeah, it's Sparky. We own a black lab, a black lab mix, and I got to tell you, um, he just loved. He he was just a happy. He was probably a uh, happy, so happy. It takes a very... The only thing that Lo, makes Loki unhappy is not getting fed. If, if My you, sister's black lab was very happy the day she ate all the Easter chocolate until she had to start... They had to start making her vomit. Then she was less amused. But she ate four pounds of chocolate that was stashed away for Easter. Well, even, even if the dog pukes, it's having a great time. Yeah. That's... I mean, throwing up for a dog, that's a party. <laughs> 